So, good morning everyone, welcome back to the course on classics in total synthesis. As you know, we have been discussing about total synthesis of many alkaloids and today we will talk about uh, total synthesis of one more alkaloid. In fact, we will talk about three total synthesis of this alkaloid by name galanthamine. So, this is the structure of galanthamine and if you look at this structure, you can see some similarity with another famous alkaloid called morphine. Already we discussed total synthesis of morphine earlier. So, it is easy to compare and then see how this new natural product that is galanthamine differs from the earlier natural product morphine which we discussed. Okay. So, both have the same aromatic ring with a hydroxyl group and you can also see the 5 membered ring that is also there in galanthamine. And next, the cyclohexenol is also there in galanthamine. Only difference is here instead of first 3 carbon atoms, the same allylic alcohol is there in the next 3 carbon atoms. So, there is a CH2 here in galanthamine. Okay? And the next major difference is this particular bond is not there. Okay? This particular bond is not there. And also, if you look at the two bonds which are connecting the aromatic ring with nitrogen. So, there are two CH2 CH2s. Okay? There are two CH2 CH2s between the aromatic carbon and NME in morphine. Whereas, in the case of galanthamine, there is only one CH2. So, these are the major differences between morphine and galanthamine structure wise. So, this galanthamine was isolated from uh, amaryllid C alkaloids, you know it showed potential clinical application in the treatment of uh, Alzheimer disease due to its selective acetyl choline esterase inhibitor activity. So, that is why many groups were interested in the total synthesis of uh, galanthamine. And also, as I said, it is closely related to the structure of morphine. So, morphine, uh, you know, there are many total synthesis of morphine and because of that, you know, you, you can see a similar number of people who are interested in the total, number, total synthesis of galanthamine. The first total synthesis was reported by Barton's group and he used a very interesting biomimetic oxidative phenol coupling as the key reaction to form a bond between the two aromatic rings. Okay? And how he has done is very interesting uh, way and for that you can see this is the bond. I am just talking about this is the bond he was trying to make using a biomimetic approach involving phenolic oxidative phenolic coupling reaction. So, the first retrosynthesis is the reduction of ketone. So, once you have this enone, one can reduce it selectively to get the galanthamine. So, that also leads to another alkaloid called norbity. Okay. Then comes the key step. So, the key step involves actually um, first you remove this benzyl protecting group selectively. So, you get the phenolic hydroxyl, then under you know conditions where you can generate radical. So, you generate radical here, you generate radical here. So, they come all the way okay, and then cyclize. So, once it cyclizes, you get a enone, okay, double bond here and double bond here like this enone. So, then this phenolic hydroxyl group will undergo intramolecular oxamicyl addition to give norbity. So, that was the idea, that was that idea was based on biomimetic strategy and this can be obtained from, so these two you know so simple starting materials aldehyde and corresponding para hydroxy phenyl acetic acid. Now, let us see how Barton's group synthesized galanthamine starting from commercially available iso panel. 
So, isovanillin is nothing but we have already discussed when we talked about morphine synthesis. So, this is isovanillin. Okay, you can benzylate the free hydroxyl group, the phenolic hydroxyl group was benzylated under basic condition. Then in C2 you form an imine by treating with methylamine. Okay. So, this imine can be immediately reduced with potassium borohydride to get the corresponding CH2 MHME. Okay. The for the other fragment you start from the para hydroxy phenyl acetic acid, para hydroxy phenyl acetic acid. So, then you protect the phenolic hydroxyl group as benzyl ether then convert the acid into acid chloride. Okay. So, these two fragments are you know very easily made from commercially available starting materials. Once you have acid chloride and then amine just combine these two you know under mild base you get the corresponding amide. Okay. This amide now it can be reduced with LIH to get the corresponding amine. Here comes the key step. Now, the first step is you have to remove the protecting group. So, that was done under hydrogenolysis condition to get the two phenolic hydroxyl groups. Okay. Once you have this phenolic hydroxyl groups, then you treat with potassium ferricyanide. Okay. So, the potassium ferricyanide as I said, first it forms the free radical, so O radical and that goes all the way to here. Okay, so, then it couples that way this is the first CC bond formation okay, as a result of oxidative phenolic coupling. Once this is formed, now you can see this ketone can enolize. Once it enolizes, it becomes phenol. That phenol can immediately undergo an oxamichael addition. Okay. If that happens, this is what you get that is a natural product norvadine, is not it? Now, this norvadine if you reduce it with LAH, you get a mixture of galanthamine and as well as epigalanthamine where this particular stereocenter is opposite. So, this is how he completed he and his uh, Barton and his group completed the total synthesis of racemic galanthamine and this was the first total synthesis and the starting materials are isovanillin and uh, parahydroxy phenyl acetic acid and the key reaction I already mentioned the key reaction was the oxidative phenolic coupling. Overall the whole sequence took about 7 steps but yield was not that high the overall yield was only 0.53 percent. Nevertheless this involved a very very important oxidative phenolic coupling as the key reaction that actually paved way for many people to synthesize galanthamine via this method as well as improve the whole process. So, the next method uh, which I am going to talk about uh, was reported from industry and how they synthesize this compound in multigram quantity, multi kilogram quantity uh, using uh, one of the key reaction is again the phenol uh, oxidative phenolic coupling reaction. Okay. This was reported by Jodis and co-workers in 1999 and let us see how they have used uh, oxidative phenolic coupling as well as other reactions as key reaction to make this. So, their retrosynthetic analysis of uh, galanthamine uh, again goes through the same intermediate that is norvadine. Then this was made from this aldehyde, this N formyl piperidine okay, that can be easily reduced to give methyl group at the same time this bromine also can be reductively cleaved. This as I said can be obtained from this uh, diol through oxidative phenolic coupling reaction which was already established by Barton's group. Then as you know this is very easy this intermediate is very easy to make that uh, in the case of uh, Barton's synthesis they started with acid chloride. Here they started with aldehyde and amine 
So, you make a skip base and then reduce it. So, reductive amination will give this key intermediate which can undergo oxidative phenolic coupling. Okay. Now, let us see how this synthesis was done. So, this synthesis was done starting from commercially available dimethoxy benzaldehyde. So, this is available in large quantity one can start with 100 grams, 200 grams on a here they started with the kilograms, several kilogram scale, then do the bromine and methanol. Okay, later they also found better method was bromine and acetic acid to introduce a bromine at this carbon. Then selectively this methoxy group, the methyl of that methoxy group was cleaved by treating with sulfuric acid. Actually this was required, the introduction of bromine was required for the selective removal of this methyl group. Okay. So, when you treat with sulfuric acid, the demethylation takes place and you get the corresponding phenol. So, now you treat with tyramine. So, tyramine is nothing but this particular amine is called tyramine. So, which is also commercially available. You take the tyramine and treat with this aldehyde, you form this imine and this imine can be in situ reduced with sodium borohydride to form the corresponding amine. So, once you have this amine, you have to protect that amine. So, the amine can be protected as N formyl uh, derivative. So, that is normally done by treating with ethyl formate and formic acid. Here comes the key reaction. So, that is the oxidative coupling of phenols. So, that reaction worked very well and you can see the oxidative coupling followed by oxamicyl addition gives this very advanced intermediate. Now, what is required from here? You should remove this bromine which is not required now. Then this N formyl group should be converted into the methyl group. Then finally, the alpha, beta and saturated ketone should be reduced to corresponding allylic alcohol. So, how it was done? So, to first to convert this N formyl into N methyl group, you have to protect the ketone here. So, it was done by treating with propylene glycol and that gave this ketol. Next, if you reduce with LAH, LAH will convert this N formyl into methyl group at the same time that also will remove the bromine which is attached to the aromatic. Okay. Reductive removal of bromine as well as conversion of the N formyl to N methyl group takes place when you treat this compound with LH. Okay. So, once that purpose is solved, then the ketol, you know you do not want the ketol. So, you can be removed using diluted Cl and THF to get the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, that is nothing but the norvadine which is a natural product. Here comes a very important um, uh, reaction which normally it is done in industry in large scale that is called seeding of crystals. Okay. What they do? Uh, they took this racemic compound, they took this racemic compound, added ethanol and triethylamine and reflexed okay, so that it dissolved. It is a crystal. So, they dissolve it in eth ethanol and uh, triethylamine while reflexing. Then they slowly added seeds of minus Norvading. Okay. They added the chiral one, the minus isomer which they have already. So, that they added it is uh, seeding. So, normally when you want to crystallize you do the seeding. So, they use this seeding technique with the naturally occurring isomer, with the naturally occurring isomer. So, once you do that, the racemic one, you know, it can be, it is possible to convert the racemic one into the same isomer. Okay. So, this is a very interesting process and they have done this on 70 kilo scale to get the naturally occurring galanthamine. Okay. Once they formed this norvadin in 70 kg scale, they have to reduce only the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, that was done with L selectride to get galanthamine hydrobromide. Okay. So, after reduction, they use HBr so that it is good to isolate the calendamine as its uh, HBr salt. Okay. 
So overall if you look at this, uh, they started with uh, simple commercially available starting material called 3,4-dimethoxybenzaldehyde and like Barton's group, they also used the oxidative phenol coupling as the key, re key reaction and the most important one was they have used the seeding technique uh, started with uh, you know a chiral norvadine. So they added uh, to the racemic norvadine they prepared using their method and using this uh, seeding technique so they could convert the racemic into the expected naturally occurring minus norvadine. So overall this process was done in large quantity and it took about uh, 9 steps and you can see the yield is 12.4 percent. Why I have written 6.7 to 19.1 because when they did on several batches the lowest one was 6.7 and then you know went up to 19.1. So then I will move to the third total synthesis which was reported in 2000 uh, reported by Barry Trost. Here he has used um, asymmetric allylic alkylation as well as Heck reaction as the key reaction to synthesize uh, galanthamine. His total synthesis was the first total synthesis where the oxidative phenol coupling was not used. Before that most of the synthesis you know involved oxidative phenolic coupling to get galanthamine and his synthesis came out of that and then started with the Heck reaction to construct that bond. Okay. So galanthamine uh, here their first retrosynthesis is you know you oxidize this allylic carbon to introduce the hydroxyl group and this can be obtained uh, by you know from this enol ether if you have enol ether and n bog both can be hydrolyzed. So enol ether hydrolysis will give aldehyde. So if you remove n bog you will get NH. So then this can undergo reductive amination to give this product. And this enol ether as well as n bog can be obtained from this diol. See this though it looks uh, you know almost same these two primary alcohols but one is benzylic alcohol so that can be selectively you know oxidized. So that way you can easily differentiate these two primary alcohols and this diol was obtained um, using Heck reaction. So you can see you have a double bond and you have bromo RL compound this can undergo Heck reaction and while doing that this double bond will migrate then followed by allylic oxidation you will get the calendar. And this can be easily obtained from these two using asymmetric allylic alkylation. Okay. So that is the key step in Barry Trost total synthesis of galanthan. And of course if you look at this, this can be easily made from isovanilline and that can be made from the corresponding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 10 dial. Okay. Let us see how it was done. Started with isovanilin. So isovanilin is one of the commercially available starting materials used in many synthesis of alkaloids. So bromine and acetic acid. So you introduce a bromine here. So now you, the other fragment you start from this uh, dialdehyde and in one part you treat with this phosphonate. Okay, one part you treat with phosphonate, you get this allylic alcohol and also esters. So this is a very interesting mechanism, try to write a mechanism for this and you will get, uh, uh, get an idea about how such allylic alcohol with an ester can be made in one step. So once you have that, so you have to make, a, you know, you have to form the allylic carbonate. So that was done with uh, trichloride. So now, so this is ready for the palladium catalyzed reaction. Okay. So what you should do, you have to combine these two and uh, so once you have these two fragments, the next step is the asymmetric allylic alkylation. So for the asymmetric allylic alkylation, um, trust group used their well established procedure. So they use normally the P and ligands derived from uh, diamines, the chiral diamines, either they use this uh, chiral diamine or they use uh, the diamine derived from cyclo, 
1 to diamino cyclohexene ok. So, this is what they use and this reaction was well exploited by trust group to get such uh, allylic ethers and once you have this ether and you can see so you, you, you are set for the key heck reaction ok. So, now let us see how this was converted into the key heck precursor. So, once you have this then you reduce the ester as well as aldehyde in one part to get the corresponding diol. The diol was then protected as uh, TBS ether by treating with TBS triflate and 2,6-lutidine. Then comes the next key reaction, so that is the HEC coupling. Now this asymmetric HEC reaction was done with palladium acetate, the phosphine ligand like uh, dicyclohexyl phosphinoethane and in the presence of proton sponge. So, this HEC reaction took place and here you know during the HEC reaction one of the TBDMS also got cleaved does not matter remove both with TBAF you get the diol ok. As I said this benzylic alcohol can be selectively oxidized. So, that was done with manganese dioxide to get the aldehyde. Now you treat with methylamine hydrochloride and sodium cyanoborohydrate so that undergoes a reductive amination with methylamine to get CH2 NH CH3. So, you have an aldehyde and then treat with this. So, that will give directly the corresponding CH2 uh, NH CH3. Then you can protect this NH as BOC, bocamide and desmartin periodinin reagent oxidizes this primary alcohol to corresponding aldehyde. Now, you do this enol ether vitic ok, enol ether vitic to generate the corresponding enol ether. The next step as I said you have to remove the bog group as well as hydrolyze the enol ether to get aldehyde ok. That was done using trifluoroacetic acid and that aldehyde as soon as the aldehyde is formed the NH which is formed in situ will attack the aldehyde and then you will get the aminol. So, that aminol again you can use sodium cyanoborohydride to reductively cleave that. So, that will give you 3 deoxy calanthamide. Okay. This is how um, trust group prepared the 3 deoxy galanthamine. If you look at this structure and compare it with galanthamine, so what is missing is the extra oxygen here. What is missing? is the extra oxygen here. So, that can be easily done by epoxidation of this double bond and migration ok. So, before that the tertiary amine was protected by treating with toluene sulfonic acid ok. Then dimethyl dioxirin treatment with dimethyl dioxirin gives a mixture of the epoxide plus opening of the epoxide by the tosyl group ok. Um, that the tosyl group is coming from here ok. Then this can be easily converted back to the epoxide if you treat with DBU ok. Once you have this epoxide you have to open the epoxide ok. So, that was done by treating with diphenyl disulide in the presence of sodium borohydride. So, sodium borohydride cleaves the selenium selenium bond ok. So, that you get PHSCH that opens up the epoxide to get the trans isomer ok. So, normally once you introduce a phenyl selenium compound what you can do? You can easily oxidize and then eliminate. So, that was done using sodium perovidate. So, sodium perovidate oxidizes this to selenoxide and the selenoxide oxide picks up this hydrogen and removes phenyl selenic acid ok. So, if you look at this you got allylic alcohol, but that was not the one which you, you wanted. Basically the alcohol should be here and then double bond should be here so that is calanthamine is not it. So, that transposition should take place. How the transposition takes place? So, there is a reagent where you can use this type of uh, 
rhenium trioxide substituted compound that is known to rearrange such things. How does it do? See for example, if you have like this system then it forms like this then this attacks followed by hydrolysis you will get the transposition. Okay. So, that is how uh, galanthamine synthesis was successfully accomplished by trust group. Though it took a little bit longer steps, uh, the key steps involved are their own laboratories, palladium catalyzed asymmetric allylic alkylation and also intramolecular heck coupling. Okay. And as I already mentioned, so this is the first total, total synthesis where uh, they have not used the oxidative phenolic coupling reaction. So, the number of steps is reasonably high, uh, it is about 17 steps and overall yield is close to 1 percent. With this we will complete total synthesis of uh, galanthamine and now we will move to few more natural products uh, belonging to alkaloids before we, we move to total synthesis of steroids.